Hi everyone. Uh, I, I'm really conscious that you've been sitting there for 30, maybe 40 minutes, uh, and uh, you must be sort of slightly stuck. So I'm going to invite you just to stand up and just uh, shake yourself out and uh, go to the nearest person to you and just look into that person's eyes uh, until you sense something slightly dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could leave you for an hour, couldn't mind that. Anyway. Okay, yeah. Time's up, time's up. <laughs> I hope it got just a little bit, I don't know, naughty. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it's quite an experience being up here because I feel as if I should be telling jokes and it's, it's, this is almost the biggest crisis I've been in for the last month, so I don't have a joke, sorry about that. But I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it feels quite intimate to tell you, uh, talk about Metacrisis as a bit of a personal story and hope that you'll accept that because it's quite difficult to follow Jonathan as any of you can imagine. Um, so my met for me, this is not a meta-crisis. This is not an age of meta-crisis. It's almost the opposite because for me, this is the first time in my life that I feel I'm surrounded by people and you lovely people are perfect examples. Uh, who can discuss this the way I've always wanted to discuss it? You know, who can think about life in the way I've always wanted to think about life. And there's a reason for that. Um, when I was very young, when I was 11, uh, I, had my I had my departure from this world, basically. So, uh, and some people know this about me, and I won't make too much of it. But my brother was killed in a car crash. And on the night that my brother uh, was dying, I was pleading with God, I was a Catholic, to save my brother's life. And in the morning, uh, you know, I had to ask what happened. You know, I was 11, there was chaos in the house, but nobody told me. And what happened was that he died. And from that moment, uh, for me, I departed from this material world. Now, that might sound ridiculous, but I'm sure some of you have had that experience. Is that you have to take such a sort of huge birth from reality. It's like, I need to get away from this so badly. And imagine somebody taking maybe Jonathan's metaphor, if you know, you're moving further and further away from this earth until you get so far away from your reality that you can find it quite acceptable. Because in that place, I could meet my brother. And I met my brother in that place. And I put my flag there. And in some ways, I've never been able to come back from that place. So what happened after that was all through my teens, my parent, my mum had um, eight brothers and sisters, seven of whom died of cancer while I was a teenager. Imagine, that's my karma in Buddhist terms, right? So all through my teenage life, I think a psychotherapist would call it disassociation. You know, I was like disassociated from reality, living in that place where nobody died. Right? So uh, that may sound strange, and it may sound all too, uh, maybe too personal, but I had to, my whole life has been bridging that gap between the place where nobody dies and the place where death is quite a hard, real thing to cope with. But I want to tell you, both those places exist, right? So 20 years on from that, I had another experience, which, which should sort of you know, square the circle, if you like, from where I'm coming from on the meta crisis. And that was, it was, my, it was the anniversary of my brother's death. Uh, and I've been a Buddhist uh, most of my life. And when I say Buddhist, I, I'm not the meditating kind of Buddhist, I'm the social activist kind of Buddhist, the Japanese kind that goes out into the villages and the jungles and sees people turning their lives into material you know, change. Um, I don't know if any of you know that kind of Buddhist, but they're, but they're out there, there's 21 million of them. Um, and I'm one of those. <laughs> um, but 20 years on, uh, I, was, I was doing a ceremony for my brother's death, as I do every single year. Uh, and at this point, uh, when I was chanting for my brother, uh, and I was in a very difficult time at that. I had, I, had, I had no money, I'd just left a job. I was about to be uh, booted out of the place I was living in. Uh, and in fact, my marriage was also breaking up. So I was in a bit of a crisis. 
Um, but I was chanting for my brother's anniversary, and I, and I broke into tears of gratitude uh, for the fact that it was his death that had put me on the path to being an activist. And I was crying with you know, gratitude about my brother's death. And uh, I finished the ceremony, and it was such a great feeling, and I felt reborn and back in the world. And the next day, I got a phone call out of the blue. This is hard to believe, but I want to put a flag down in two places. I got a phone call out of the blue from somebody who had spotted uh, a website where, to cut a long story short, my brother's father, who was not my father, had left money to my brother, who was now giving it to me. So I received on that day 10,000 pounds. It was the most bizarre experience. And I'm only talking about it with you now because I think we're living in the age and you are the people with whom I can share those kinds of experiences. Spiritual, spiritual experiences, the, the work of the imagination is very directly connected to reality. You know, you could say consciousness is everything. And what you imagine you can make believe, you can make happen in the material world. And I had, I've had experience after experience of that in my lifetime. So I've never been a person who makes money or earns money in a normal way. I don't get on the ladder. I've never been on the ladder. I don't have a career. I do whatever's in front of me. And yet I've ended up in the most extraordinary places. You know, I've given two talks at the NATO headquarters. Can you believe that? Because I became a soft power expert. Uh, only last week, I was with a, with a group of people who are, you know, world world changers. With Karen in that place, you know, who believe that they can they can meet the SDGs, the Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals, by 2030. We are living in an era where what you can imagine can become reality. And I want to land that here when we think about the meta-crisis. Because that explains why I started a new political platform. Because what I knew was that the real crisis was to be living as a human being in the human world. So whereas, uh, to, uh, to refer to Jonathan, Jonathan's talked about uh, his, uh, his project to spiritualize, you know, to move from the material to the spiritual. My, my project has always been to materialize, right? So to move from my imagination into the real world of the human condition and to make what's possible, possible in the real world. And for that reason, I'm not in a meta-crisis, I'm in a world of huge opportunity because for the last 20 years, we've been in a revolution, right? What is the nature of this revolution that we've been in? We've moved, and I'm now talking about our human condition and how we talk about the world we live in. We've moved from being uh, driven like machines by the growth economy without questioning that, into an era of questioning everything, of experiencing completely new things, of connecting with each other in ways we could never connect before, of having access to the any of the information that we need. If something's happening in Uganda, I can download it onto my laptop, you know, living in North London. I can get the blueprints. I can be doing commoning projects with people all over the world. I can be in global networks that are giving rise to real change. Before this was only something I could imagine. Now it's real. We are in the revolution. So how do we share that with people? I started a political platform because I wanted to make politics real. And what, to, and what that means to me is I want people to grasp the idea of agency and power and make it their own. What does agency mean to me? What does power mean to me? You might think that's an impossible thing to do when you think about the current politics, but the reality is we're living in a world of left and right. Most people don't know what that even means. right? But they, some say, I'm on the left, I'm on the right. Most people can't even tell you what the left and the right means, but they've just accepted that. <clears throat> or they might say, we're in a crisis of democracy, but does anybody know what democracy is? 
You know, when we think about democracy, we don't have a democracy, not really. So this is the world in which we start to make those things become true. So we do three things on our political platform. One is we produce something called the Daily Alternative. And the Daily Alternative talks about all the stuff that Westminster never talks about. It talks about the, all, this, all of you adding up all your projects. That's what we talk about. Uh, about people finding their agency, people finding their meaning and purpose, people finding new ways of belonging. This is what a democracy is. The second thing we do is, funnily enough, is we look at the elephant. What is the elephant in the room? What is this thing that we're all trying to name? Exactly what you were talking about, Julia. Funnily enough, we have an elephant project. Uh, trying to name the system that will deliver for us. And the third thing we do is in a really practical way, we build citizens' action networks. And that means getting people to join up together and connect them to the solutions that are already available. It's all available. The answer's already there. Our job is to help connect people to those things. And as soon as we started to name these three things, uh, other stuff started to pop up. Well, one of the great uh, wonders is the Extinction Rebellion uh, popped up and became a very popular front for delivering almost the same sorts of things that we're trying to deliver, and now we're very happily working with them. Uh, every day, a new project arises, which is the thing, really, that I've been waiting for. So we were just about to relaunch uh, the alternative on March the 1st. We're moving from being something that is a sort of show and tell project to something that is almost entirely participatory. It's like a virtual political party. It's not a real political party because what's the point? But it's like a virtual political party you can join and can start, start to participate. But the real job that we're trying to do there is materialize change by not allowing ourselves to be in a meta crisis but to be in a meta opportunity. Thank you very much.